When most people hear the words artificial intelligence, they think of this. I'll be back. Instead of the many ways people interact with AI every day. From Google Translate, to personal assistants like Siri and Alexa, and even to how we unlock our phones. Computer scientist John McCarthy coined the term artificial intelligence way back in 1955. But by then, others had already started to think about what AI would look like, most notably Alan Turing. His Turing test set an early and still relevant bar to see if artificial intelligence measures up to human intelligence. The test is simple. If you can have a conversation with an AI and not notice that you're talking to an algorithm, well then it's passed. Here's how McCarthy defined AI. It is the science and engineering of making intelligent machines, especially intelligent computer programs. Humans spent the several decades after imagining what that could lead to. Perhaps most vividly is Stanley Kubrick's 2001 A Space Odyssey. I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. We're still a long ways away from creating artificial general intelligence, a self-aware entity like that. But AI technology has boomed in recent years. Now, as people build better and more sophisticated algorithms, some of the biggest leaps forwards have come from gaming. Back in the 1990s, Deep Blue beat the reigning chess champion. In 2011, IBM's Watson won at Jeopardy against two of the world's best players. And in 2016, Google DeepMind's AlphaGo beat one of the best players in the world at the ancient game of Go. AlphaGo watched hundreds of games to derive its own strategy and guidelines. This is similar to the way that computers have learned to identify pictures of skin cancer, which they can now do at better rates than doctors. This is an example of augmented intelligence. This is generally where AI is right now, and it sounds great. It can do narrowly defined tasks well, especially when it's paired with a human expert, like Google's virtual assistant, which can even book appointments for you. So how can I help you? Hi, I'm calling to book a women's haircut for a client. Um, I'm looking for something on May 3rd. Sure, give me one second. Mm-hmm. But when will we get from that to this? Good morning, Theodore. Good morning. You have a meeting in five minutes. You want to try getting out of bed? <laughs> You're too funny. OK, good, I'm funny. Basically, this is a shift from a narrow AI to an artificial general intelligence. And now this can mean many things, like AI being able to have a normal conversation, thinking independently, or even reasoning abstractly. It's clear, things are speeding up. Computer processing power continues to grow rapidly. And the last several years have seen a boom in the generation of big data that we can feed to machine learning algorithms. Futurist Ray Kurzweil used a set of models and historical data to predict that machine intelligence will surpass human intelligence as early as 2045. Philosopher Nick Bostrom surveyed four groups of experts and the medium estimate was 2040 to 2050. This moment is what people in the AI biz call the singularity. The birth of an artificial general intelligence. It's a metaphor popularized by Kurzweil's book for passing through the center of a black hole. At this point, the virtual merges with the real, and no one really knows what happens after that. Scary, right? Human-level machine intelligence would be able to help design even smarter AI, very quickly becoming many times more intelligent than humans. The possibilities terrify union buster billionaire Elon Musk and the late physicist Stephen Hawking. But I think the development of full artificial intelligence could spell the end of the human race. Science fiction is full of apocalyptic examples. And even with our current levels of technology, ethical dilemmas are at the forefront of everyone's mind. In 2016, Microsoft released an AI chatbot on Twitter named Tay. 
They had to take it offline within 24 hours. Learning quickly from Twitter trolls, it started posting extremely offensive and even racist tweets. And devices that constantly listen to your every word present a very real privacy concern as well. Another example is facial recognition software. Recently, Amazon had to answer questions from Congress when a program it sells to law enforcement, Recognition, matches the faces of dozens of lawmakers to those of criminal mugshots. In the courtroom, judges can and do use an AI called Compass, which can determine if a convicted criminal is likely to commit another crime. And guess what? An investigation by ProPublica discovered that Compass was almost twice as likely to misclassify black defendants as higher risk than their white counterparts. Zooming out, a report by McKinley and Company predicts that between 400 and 800 million jobs will be lost to automation by 2030. This shift might be too sudden for markets to correct themselves. So what happens to a large chunk of these people that can't find new jobs? The ultimate goal is to have humans and AI working together to create something more powerful but still ethical. Something transhuman. Something H+. Nick Bostrom discusses the singularity in his book, and in it, he highlights the urgency of finding out as fast as humanly possible how to engineer AI towards human friendliness. For instance, self-driving cars could eradicate nearly all of the 1.25 million global deaths per year that result from automobile accidents. No matter how you see our future, from artificial intelligence exterminating humanity to it spurring us on to the next stage of our evolution, artificial general intelligence could be the last major invention humans make alone.